Hello, hello, hello. My name is Gedvinas and I have a laser. I have a laser. So, some time ago, um, Xtool has reached out to me asking if um, I'd like to review one of their units, uh, one of their lasers. And since it looked awesome on paper, I of course said yes. Right? And this is the this is the one that they've sent me. Um, and before the, we begin, I guess I need to say a disclaimer. Um, I did receive this laser free of charge, um, but all thoughts said here are going to be my own. And uh, Xtool didn't ask me to do any talking points or any guidelines or anything like that, right? So everything that I say is my own, my own thoughts and ideas about this. Um, so, without, with that out of the way, I guess we can begin. The laser arrives with some assembly required. It does take like 30 minutes or so, and the instruction manual is quite well done. And that is quite refreshing, considering what kind of manuals I'm used to from, you know, similar companies. Well done, honestly, well done. They also have a pair of protection glasses, uh, which is a must when operating machines like this. So I give it a thumbs up for sure. Even during assembling, I have noticed the great build quality. The frame is all metal with the motion system being belt driven and using metal rollers. I had to ship the laser from Sweden to Lithuania uh, with a company that basically uses, uh, you know, they, they drive your stuff with a van. Uh, and I didn't feel the need to dis disassemble the laser cutter before giving it to the courier, right? So it arrived with the frame still being perfectly square and without any misalignments. So the build quality and the material quality gets a 10 out of 10 from me. The connectivity for Xtool D1 is also really great. You can either connect through an USB cable or once it's set up, you can simply use the Wi-Fi. During testing, I had some issues with the Wi-Fi connection not being kind of stable and it all was very janky and so on. But it seems that restarting the software kind of fixes it. Well, for the, for the most part. So once the, this issue is fixed, I'll give it five out of five stars. <laughs> but as it is right now, it gets like a three or a four. Wireless works, but it's kind of finicky. And okay, so before we move on to the actual testing, let's talk about the size. Xtool D1 has the working area of 432 by 406 millimeters, which is weird, but it's like 17 by 16 inches or freedom units for our American friends, which is quite good considering that it's, you know, it's very easy to order material in A3 sized sheets. The outer dimensions of the machine are roughly like 600 by 600 millimeters, which is somewhere close to like 24 by 24 inches. This makes it a truly desktop laser cutter, which is quite portable as well. I don't know how to grade this, so I'll give it like a smiley face or something. Okay, so now let's talk how do they actually get you. So, the price of Xtool D1, as of the time of recording, is listed at 1,116 US dollars. And there's a discount, pushing it down to like 921 USD. By the way, if you want to buy it, please use the link in the video description and in the pinned comment, uh, and I will get like a 5% uh, commission from your purchase. Money's tight, boys. Anyway, for the price, you get uh, the bare bones laser module with the motion system, right? So, so you get the laser, right? And can you engrave with it, with the base model? Yeah, absolutely you can, without a doubt. Uh, can you cut with it? Well, you know, kind of. It's not going to be pretty. And let me explain. Basically, when you, when you cut with a laser, you want like a gap between the sheet that you're cutting and the tabletop. You need like an air gap and this is for uh, for you to have like a cleaner cut to let the smoke escape and so on right and the base model it doesn't have that right so for this you need to 
purchase a honeycomb structure or honeycomb not structure sorry a honeycomb panel set and that is like uh, 139 dollars which is not that bad um, i think it's very important component to your laser and so you can think of the final price of the actual laser you know which can be used for engraving and cutting as being 139 plus 921 being 1060 US dollars. Um, and there are other add-ons for quality of life improvement, but since I haven't tested them, I'm not, I'm not going to speak about them. I'll skip over them. I think the honeycomb should be incorporated with the base model, honestly. Um, even if it means a slightly increased cost. It's such a vital part of the laser cutter. So I give this like 3.5 honeycomb panels out of five laser modules. Now, finally, we can start talking about the fun stuff, the cutting and graving experience. My aim was to test this in a proper architecture office environment and see if we could easily use this laser to help out with making architectural models. And in short, it worked great. It worked really well, actually. And yeah, there it is. There it is. You know, a small little test of waffle, waffle structure. Uh, but there is a bit more to this than a direct yes or no answer and so let's let's dive in shall we so xtool d1 comes in two flavors right there's a 5 watt and a 10 watt like laser module strength right if you want to, to do some cutting i strongly suggest using the 10 watt version because like 5 watt uh, you will struggle with anything that is not one millimeter cardboard. For my test, I used three millimeter plywood, um, as that should be the limit as to how, how thick we can cut. I've just decided to create a quick waffle structure. Um, and files are available for Patreon supporters if you're interested and exported the cut uh, and the engrave file separately as DXF uh, formats. And this, uh, I had to export the engrave and cut file separately just because of the limitation of the software, not because of the limitation of the machine. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So, okay, so I had two files that I wanna cut, what now? Well, you need software, right? You need software that talks with the machine and converts the drawings into movement instructions like just with 3D printing and G-codes. So for this, I use Laserbox Basic, which is basically a free software that's quite limited in its functionality, being the reason why I had to use two files. Um, but hey, for stuff that we do in the office, right? For, for simple stuff, it's perfect. First, I connected the cutter to our Wi-Fi, which was quite easy and until it wasn't, then imported the DXF file for the cut lines, found laser settings for 3mm plywood on the online user manual, typed those in, imported the DXF for engraved lines, did the same thing, and that was that. We were ready to go. Of course, if the software had layers, we wouldn't need two DXF files, but honestly, this kind of workflow is not that bad. I guess I give it like a six AutoCAD document. Now, before we do the cutting, it's always a good idea to use the framing feature, which basically makes the laser pointer move around the area, which is going to cut like a bounding box type of thing. It's so nice. Once everything is in order, you just need to press start and off it goes. You can see I used the office carpet as my backdrop for the shot, which means that the laser was inside of the office. Yeah, so while it was engraving, it was still fine. But then when it started cutting through the plywood, I had to cancel it immediately. 
who would have thought that laser cutters produce a lot of smoke? <laughs> Um, and this is my biggest issue with this machine. I had to move it outside not to trigger the fire alarm. If you don't have space with great ventilation, then you definitely need to invest in some fume extraction solution. Something. You need something. And it seems like X2 has you covered with another add-on, of course, which is an enclosure with air and air purifier module. This will set you back another $879. I do not know how well this would work in an office setting, but I sure would like to test it out. So Xtool people, if you're watching this, you know, let's talk. Anyway, back to the cutting. The 10 watt laser module had some issues chewing through three millimeter plywood but hitting it with the second pass uh, seems to have solved it, so I'm, I'm happy. The parts fit quite well with no apparent tolerance issues, so I'd say the main thing that it needs to do, it does pretty damn well. Cutting through 1mm cardboard, uh, cardboard or 3mm balsa wood was not a challenge for it at all. For example, this 1mm cardboard layout took like 40 minutes to cut, which is quite good considering the power of the laser. So, and by the way, the thing that was cut here is for the next video for my second ch channel, Gadan. So make sure to subscribe to it if you like architectural models. It should be a, a pretty damn fun one. What wasn't fun, though, was fiddling with the engraving settings uh, for a JPEG image. If you try to engrave it as it is, Xtool D1 will indeed engrave it. That, yeah, it's, it's gonna do it, but it will take so freaking long. This seems to be due to every sample point um, having like different pixel brightness and the, the laser module needing to tone up or tone down every single kind of not even millimeter, fra at fractions of a millimeter, so it slows down itself dramatically. Either way, quickly running this through Photoshop and uh, converting into a three-tone poster seems to have fixed the issue completely. So, this one... <laughs> this one took 20 minutes to do. And let, let, let me show you the, the quality. So this is like the lowest possible quality for, for the engraving. And I think this turned out pretty, pretty well. One to one scale almost, right? And um, it's 20 minutes for something like this is honestly not that bad. Also, as a bonus, you get a nice wood smell, like burnt wood smell. I guess, conclusion time, huh? So, do I think this laser cutter is worth the price for an architect? Absolutely, without a doubt. I, I think it's worth it, yes. But, only if you also get the honeycomb panel set, as well as figure out the fume extraction problem. If you don't have those two figured out and done, then this laser cutter, cutter thing like the base module is uh, quite like just an engraving tool rather than a proper, you know, workshop laser cutter tool. So you need those two. You will not be making furniture with this machine. That's for sure. Yeah, that, that, that's out of the question. But it, it was never meant for making furniture, right? So it, it was never meant for that. Instead, it offers a great solution uh, for model making in a compact package for a price that's honestly pretty impressive. If this seems like something you'd want to buy, check the link in the video description, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All the good stuff. And I think that's it, isn't it? I think I'll maybe design a coaster for my Patreon supporters. So if you want to get one, link in the video descri description as well. <laughs> yeah, 
enough of this. I'll see you in the next one. Later.